welcome to the best treatment for spontaneous pneumothorax. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So let's talk a little bit here about spontaneous pneumothorax. This is a situation that occurs in the lung area when we have air entering to pleural space. So it's getting out of the lungs where it's supposed to be, entering into the pleural space, which is really just a potential space between the lung and the pleura. There's a little bit of fluid in there, helps to keep the lung from rubbing up against the chest wall, but it's a potential space. In other words, there's not supposed to be space in that pleural area, but we have air that's getting into that pleural area. Now, how does it get there spontaneously? We know that this can happen if we stick a needle in there or if the patient's involved in trauma, etc. But in this case here, it's entering that pleural space because there was a bleb, a little small outpouching on the lung that burst and allowed air to get into that pleural space. More common in young adults that this would happen. So the problem here is that the typical way to reduce a pneumothorax is to put in a chest tube. As you can see, chest tubes are large, they're painful, they're going through the skin, they're going into the pleural space, and if you've ever had any kind of pleural inflammation, maybe after you've had pneumonia or a cold or something like that, it hurts, it hurts a lot. And so these are very painful devices to have in place. So this is what we typically use in order to get the air out of that pleural space. So it has been thought that maybe we could use a smaller needle. So using a small bore needle aspiration, where we just put a needle in there and aspirate out the air, or maybe a catheter that's put in and then attached to suction. So something smaller that's not going to cause as much pain and discomfort for the patient. Well, in this study, they looked at whether or not they were able to reinflate the lung using each one of these different modalities. So success was defined as having reinflation of the lung, and then, of course, they also looked at complications. From the simple aspiration, as opposed to using a large bore chest tube, Simple aspiration had a 29% failed reinflation, whereas a chest tube only had an 18% failed reinflation. So you see there's a higher risk of a failed reinflammation so that they, the, uh, they're not able to reinflate the lung with using the simple aspiration versus the chest tube. However, the simple aspiration does cause less pain, less restriction of the patient's breathing, less chance of infection, and there's no difference between the two modalities in the reoccurrence rate of the spontaneous pneumothorax or in additional complications. So here's the reference if you want to know more about this study. It's a simple aspiration versus drainage for complete pneumothorax, a randomized non-inferiority trial, and this was by Marx et al. Thanks for joining me for the best treatment for spontaneous pneumothorax. My name is David Woodruff. Until next time, 